Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you for being back. I hope you're ready to learn a new thing and how to make a new thing, how to draft a new thing and how to sew a new thing. This is something that we'll be making today in this, today, in this video. I decided to give up on skirts because I think I did plenty of them and I think you're kind of sick and tired of uh, how to make a skirt with a peplum, how to make a skirt with a flounce, how to make this one, how to make that one. It's time to move on, it's time to put something else in your wardrobe. So what I decided to do today is show you how to actually do this gorgeous little beauty. Uh, I uh, actually found this fabric uh, a couple of weeks ago here in Cork and I couldn't leave the fabric store because it is amazing, isn't it? The flower print, the spring around us, everything is waking up. I had to do something about uh, spring edition, spring clothes because I'm sick and tired of winter. Yes, it's still winter in Ireland. Anyway, uh, this is only um, my suggestion of how you can wear this. I wore it on jeans, I wore it on skirts, I wore it on everything. I think this blouse is gorgeous because it's very flattering to girls who like me are not very um rich in the chest area let's say um even though they look really nice on the girls that are quite busty um i'm going to show you a very simple way how to do it and i'm going to introduce a couple of new rules um how to actually make a proper v-neck so um stay tuned and i hope you're going to like it hi guys and welcome again this is the design um, that I am going to do today. So this is a technical sketch of the actual blouse. As you can see, very simple, yet um, uh, very complicated. All the darts from the busts are going to go into the um, shoulder dart and that's basically it. We're going to start from the back side because I believe it's much simpler to draft it. It's just a couple of steps. Go around your uh, block mark all the important uh, spots, like where is your shoulder dirt, where are your uh, back notches, and let's go and do the step number one. I'm going to get rid of the side seam or get rid of the side shaping because I don't want this to be on this blouse. I want it to be a little bit um, fuller and I'm going to leave the dirt inside on the waist. Now you can decide how long do you want the uh, back part to be or where do you want your pattern to actually be separated. You can make it lower, you can make it higher, it's up to you. My suggestion would be somewhere uh, above the cross front, um, side, uh, cross front. You do the notches here because when you uh, pull this uh, pattern apart, you know where to actually notch it together. Now after this being done, you have to add some extension or you have to add some fullness to this actual blouse. I'm going to add five centimeters. Now that's an optional thing here. You can add five, 10, 15, as much as you want. The more you add, the more fullness the back side is going to have. So just consider that when you're putting it in your blouse. So here it is five centimeters added. It's a really, really simple thing to do. And that's it. Now we have the back side Peter, uh, pattern done. Let's go and do the center front. Center front is a bit more complicated, but it's going to be okay. You're going to uh, go around the front pattern and you're going to mirror it because it's an overlap skirt, uh, sorry, overlap top. So we have to do it this way. Make sure to mark all the darts. And once this is done, we can continue. The first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to decide how long of a V-neck do we want and where we actually want it to overlap. You will do this by literally drawing your bust. How to know how big your bust is, you're going to measure from the middle of your bust to the wire on your bra. I got seven centimeters, so I'm just gonna take that as a radius and draw it around the actual bust. Now when I have this sorted, you can decide where do you want your v-neck to overlap on the center front. I want it to be somewhere in the middle because I know where my bra is going to be and I know that I will wear bra when I'm wearing this blouse so I want my bra to be underneath 
uh, the actual overlap. If you make it lower than the one that I made, that means that your brow is actually going to be showing and um, well, that's something you definitely need to consider. If you're gonna wear a braless, go ahead. I'm going to get rid of the side shaping here as well. So just draw a straight line and that's gone. And the next step here is to get rid of the actual uh, shoulder dart because this is going to be two pieces as well. The shoulder dart is not going to be sewn into the, uh, into the pattern. It's going to be, its fullness is going to be added on this stage, on this step into the side dart like we, do, uh, like we did in skirts if you remember as well. So we cut the one leg of the shoulder dart and we literally pivoted the dart so we can put all the fullness or just one centimeter of the uh, shoulder dart inside the side dart just for now. We're going to tape down that uh, closed dart but not the whole way just uh, below or long enough so that can be our pattern because this is our upper pattern piece. So here I measured the back side just to see how big of a um, pattern was on my back side. This doesn't have to be this way. You can make a front one smaller or bigger than the back, uh, the, the back side pattern. It's up to you. Now when this is done, this literal pattern is done and we can cut it away. We're going to release the fullness of the shoulder dart here as you can see it because all the darts are going to be placed into that uh, dart because this is where we have to have the fullness. Now the v-neck rule. So the v-neck rule is you're going to uh, draw a line across to the center front and you're going to see which cup are you. If you're in a cup, you have to have a dart of one centimeter on that v-neck. So I am at an A cup, so I am uh, one centimeter. But there is some other thing as well. You have to see how long or deep your actual uh, V-neck is. Mine is 2.1 or 2.15 centimeters long, which means that my actual dart is going to be 325. That's 215 of a depth plus one centimeter for A cup equals 325. The dirt is actually going to be placed on the middle of the v-neck on the bottom part on the upper part sorry and we're going to connect it to the bust if you're going to be making a v-neck that's going deeper under the actual center front you're going to connect it to the uh, waist dirt this way here we're going to uh, make a, a draw a middle kind of approximately no this is not something that you have to be very very there's no rule where to put it as long as you put it somewhere close to this dirt so it doesn't make a weird angle so you're going to cut it in half like 320 25 in half and then uh, you're going to draw one leg other leg and you're going to drop all of the fullness of that dirt inside the shoulder dart that's left open on uh, this side that you can see so just hinge it, close it, tape it down and fix the actual jock here. That's it. Now let's cut it all out. We're going to start with the back side. As you can see, the way here is my uh, bottle of water, which was usually used to be the bottle where you keep cooking, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to use the water soluble pen here to draw the seams and seams are going to be one centimeters everywhere because I tend to forget how big of a seam did I actually put somewhere so uh, I always make mistake uh, uh, when it comes to that. Here as you can see it's quite tight on that little uh, bottom of the center front so I'm going to put the one centimeter seam here as well and disregard this point here because I'm going to put the band anywhere anyway on this blouse so it's going to cover it. Cut it out and you're ready to go. What we are left here to do is to cut out the upper parts of the actual patterns for center back and center front. Center back is going to be cut on the fold and it's going to be done as the same thing as others. 
This process where I'm actually putting side seams um, by water soluble pen for this fabric which is really really slippy and moves a lot I think it's better because then once I mark it I know uh, if I did a good job because if I place the pattern on it and then the pattern slightly moves I get something different and I always make a mistake so that's my trick or something that I would recommend you to do as well just to make sure that you actually cut the pattern out properly this is it we have the center pattern at the center back and the center front upper and bottom let's sew it together and then we'll see how it looks like so here we have it in um, semi done kind of uh, it's finished um, it has everything enclosed in the seam and as you can see it literally overlaps where I want it to this is the back side and that is now let's do the bend now the bend where I'm going to put the elastic in uh, is going to be the same length as the full circ circumference of the blouse so just measure the front part and the back part once you overlap the parts together and then you can see the actual circumference here is the um, cutting out of the sleeve which is really simple there's nothing special I'm going to do here except um, make sure to mark the back notch and the front notch which we're going to do in a second here marking your pattern eliminates mistakes from my point of view because I always sew the back side to the front side or front side to the back side when it comes to sleeves always and then I try it on and it's not the way it's supposed to be because I'm too fast and um, I never marked my pieces before but that is definitely something I would uh, advise you to do mark your notches on your sleeves let's sew it together and here we have it all done and dusted overlaps where I want and how I want it you cannot see the waistband or the elastic part because I tucked it into my jeans but as you can see here this is the way it looks like it all matches perfectly I guess the pattern was okay let's go dancing <laughs> 